Initially, when I started diving, the kelp was so thick, you could hardly swim through it. We lost about 90% of the kelp along the Northern California coast, and it hasn't rebounded. I was born and raised here on the Mendocino coast, and I'm actually, I'm a second generation sea urchin diver. My father chased the industry up here from Southern California, and he never left. I was lucky enough to get my permit in 2007 and start diving right alongside my father. And I've been diving for 16 years now. When I'm commercially harvesting red sea urchin for food, the healthier the area, the more food, the more uni is gonna be inside the urchin. However, a lot of the coastline has been decimated by small purple sea urchins. In an urchin barren, there isn't any food at all. And the urchin that you see on the bottom, there isn't any uni inside. There's no nutritional value. It's just a living, empty shell. So the purple urchin barrens are a cause of great concern um, within our state. And so what we're trying to do here at Sea Grant is come up with a way to economically incentivize the removal of urchins so that the kelp forests have a chance to come back. By removing urchins from barrens, it releases some pressure from the kelp forests and it gives the kelp an opportunity to bounce back from that predation pressure. In a collaboration with commercial urchin divers, they go and catch them and then they hand them off to an aquaculture operator to fatten them up on something else. And then in a matter of weeks, you take something that has no commercial value to something that produces seafood product that is in high demand all over the world. So we're already doing that and it worked spectacularly well. After a period of time, we bring them in empty and then they go from something that has no value to something where you have these beautiful plump lobes of this golden row which has a good deal of demand in the current seafood market. So, you know, the proof of concept is, is there. And now we're ironing out the little details, like what's the best way to get the best version of that highly unique taste to the, to the spoon, to the plate. Uni is very versatile. You know, uh, you can be served raw, of course, on sushi, but we use it on different bites. People sometimes are scared of them, but it's always fun to prepare them in different ways or grill them and brush them with a little sweet soy or something so that people can enjoy them and, you know, it's something that you don't see at the grocery store. Providence and ranching and helping the environment is very important. Of course, we always have these conferences about what the future holds, how much seafood will be left in 15 years, how are we being responsible as chefs to make an impact. And, you know, we know the water has changed temperatures, you know, Seafood is different than it was 10 years ago. So it's very important to educate our guests and our new young cooks. So California aquaculture as an industry has struggled to develop in the past couple of decades. And some of that is due to the perceptions um, of, of what it can do for the environment. I think this project is a great opportunity to show that aquaculture can have real positive influences on both the economy, the environment, and our coastal communities. There's so much opportunity for collaboration and synergy. This is a perfect example of that. This is an opportunity that I can get back underwater and harvest sea urchins, and it doesn't matter if they're not good because they're gonna be ranched and fattened up. The relationships that I've built working towards ranching is unprecedented. Uh, historically, commercial fishermen and science agencies and NGOs, uh, aquaculture as well, it always hasn't gone hand in hand. Uh, but where we're going with this climate change issue and especially the urchin barrens that are a result from it, uh, without these collaborations, uh, we wouldn't be where we are now. And this is giving me an opportunity to continue doing what I love as a commercial sea urchin diver. I can stay in this industry as a second generation diver and I can keep it going.